joining us right now is senior fellow and military expert for defense priorities, retired Army Lieutenant Colonel Daniel Davis. Colonel, thanks very much for being here. We appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for having me. Your appreciate reaction it. to what Iran is trying to do here, uh, no casualties, and yet firing at our bases in Iraq. Uh, the president's going to be making a statement in a little bit. We will take it live. What is your reaction? Yeah, we, 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 uh, we dodged a bullet last night, so to speak, in that there were no American uh, casualties, and I thank God for that. But it's, it's important to point out we're not out of the woods yet, and we still have to be very careful. We had, just within the last couple of hours, we had some of the uh, Hashd al-Shabi uh, militia from the Shia militia in Iraq uh, who also lost uh, some people in our attack when we killed Soleimani, they're saying, okay, Iran did its part, now it's our turn. So the threat to our troops and, and to our civilian personnel in the, throughout the region is still very real. But the other issue that we, gotta, we can't lose sight of is that earlier yesterday, before all this happened, Iran announced that they are now done with the joint uh, JCPOA, with the Iran deal. And so now they're not even pretending to keep any of that, and that's going to raise tensions even more. Hey, Lieutenant Colonel Cabot Phillips here. Do you think this is all we should expect from Iran as a response, or should we expect potential for more attacks on soft targets, cyber warfare, anything like that in the future coming? Well, the, the, the Iranian regime was, was very careful last night, very quickly after these missiles were launched, to say, this is it. This is it. We're done here. We're not going to do any more. We've, we've slapped America in the face. And we know we've retaliated. But as long as nothing else happens, we're done unless we get hit again and then we'll go back. So I think that they're signaling, look, we are not looking to escalate this. We don't want war any more than you do, and we should take advantage of that. But I'll, I'll tell you, I, I know this is, a lot of people don't like this, but what we should do, and, and what I've been advocating for many months now, is we need to withdraw our troops from both Iraq and Syria, because all they do right now is, is endure strategic risk for us. They have a target on their back, but they're not providing any security for the United States. And if we get those troops out of there, we take away a big portion of what Iran even could do, and we puts us in a much stronger position. General, can I ask you about the ordinance that's being used here? Because I'm fascinated from the technology side. If I'm a soldier on the ground in Iraq and I'm being shot at by what looks like cruise missiles, am I being defended by better technology somehow? Is there a way that we can knock these things out before they hit any bases? I mean, you talk about the risk of having troops in these regions, but my assumption as a civilian is our technology is better because that seems to be how we're conflict, how we're doing warfare today. Who's got the better tech? Well, is that Colonel, the case? Well, Colonel, before you answer that, I can answer yeah. that. Lucas Tomlinson has talked about this in the last couple of hours. We do have anti-air missile defense systems throughout the Middle East, but they did not intercept any of these missiles, and none of those missile defense systems are located at the two bases that were hit, Al Assad and Erbil in northern Iraq. So that raises the question: Continue. Why not? If we have this, why don't we have? all these troops surrounded by this technology. Well, well, I mean, that's certainly a question. But I will point out, though, that some of these, these missile defenses are anything but foolproof. I mean, they're, they can help, but they can't knock everything down, first of all. And if it's the other kind of missiles, if it's some of the cruise missiles, which we know that Iran has, which apparently they didn't use, which is probably also important, we can't shoot a lot of those down. So there's a, not a lot of defenses against some of those, and that's something that we got to watch out for. We, have, what, these, what, we what, have these more than 2,000 missiles uh, in Iran's arsenal because they were not banned in the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. That's the point. That, that Iran and Soleimani now dead and the Quds forces and the Revolutionary Guard, they have money, billions of dollars in their coffers to fund terrorism throughout the region because of the Iran nuclear deal. So are you deal. saying that they're using our missiles they bought from us no, to no, no. shoot it's, at us? No, no, no. They have missiles. They were not banned in the Iran nuclear deal. Where'd they, they get have these things? Where'd they because, get them from? Colonel, you can answer that. Yeah, a lot of them are indigenously produced. A lot of them were purchased from Russia and some others from China. They got them from a number of different locations and even some from North Korea for that matter. Mm. But uh, the important thing to point out here that we also we can't lose any side of here is that this is in the context, all of this, uh, of the maximum pressure campaign where we say we want to reach a negotiated deal. Yeah. President Trump came into office saying that he wants to get rid of the JCPOA and have a better deal. But That's look, right. here's the hard point. we got to accept this. If we want to make a new deal, we have to offer 
offer uh, Iran something where they can come out with any kind of a win. But hmm. right now, we only want to tell them what they can't do, and that's not going to get us a, an agreement. Well, in yeah. terms of propaganda, Iran is claiming a, a win. Iranian state television was saying uh, earlier that 80 American terrorists were killed in the Iran missile strikes. That's just and propaganda. We, it's just so not why true. should we believe there are other claims that this is the only attack they're going to do if we already know that they're going to lie about these kind of things? Why yeah. should we assume that they're being honest when they say, well, this is it. We're well, done attacking. By now. the way, Rouhani said overnight that the final answer to the killing of Soleimani will be to get all troops out of Iraq. And the president is actually weighing. Uh, he said yesterday he was weighing withdrawing U.S. troops from Iraq. Listen to this, sir. It's something ultimately that I want to see. We don't want to be there forever. We want to be able to get out. I didn't want to be there in the first place, to be honest, and everybody knows that. But we're there now. We've done a great job. We've gotten rid of the caliphate. 100% of the caliphate is gone, and which is ISIS. Uh, we have uh, thousands of ISIS prisoners. So I think we've done a fantastic job. But eventually, we want to be able to let Iraq run its own affairs, and that's very important. So at some point, we want to get out. What about yeah. that, Lieutenant Colonel? Oh, yeah. that's. I mean, I, I'm strongly in agreement with that. I mean, I've been advocating that for a long time. And, the, you know, too many people want to just keep the troops there, you know, just to keep them there in case we need them for something. But President Trump is dead spot on that they have accomplished their only militarily attainable mission that they've been given since Obama sent them in there, which he didn't really give them a, a military mission they could accomplish. Trump said, "Get rid of ISIS. Take to get them out of their caliphate. Get rid of them from Iraq, from Raqqa, and from Mosul. They succeeded that. Now it's time to get them out of there because there is no mission right now that they're even doing that has can be accomplished. So all they are right now is a target on their back, and I don't think President Trump wants that." Yeah, Colonel, it's good to see you this morning. Thanks very much for your insights. Good to be here. Thank Colonel you, Colonel Daniel Davis, joining us.